Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Thomas Park. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to do a privacy audit of Winscribe VPN. This privacy audit is going to consist of a structured analysis of this VPN that we've done with other VPNs on the channel. If you guys want to see which VPNs have passed the privacy audit, find that in the description down below. So guys, let's go ahead and check it out. So guys, in terms of Winscribe's privacy policy, I do think they do a pretty good job here. They do have a third party, uh, or not not third party, they use Payrick Web Analytics, which is more of like a privacy friendly um, analytics platform, different than Google Analytics, so I do like that factor. So some of the cool things about Payrick Analytics is that you don't have to share your data with Google, and you have all these different little benefits, and it's kind of similar to Matamo Analytics too. So Winscribe is one of the few um, VPNs that uses this, which is nice. They also don't really require that much logs or anything concerning um, when using their service, which is good. So looking up Winscribe on the Blacklight Test, this is a website that analyzes a website to see what kind of trackers, third-party cookies, um, any monitoring skips, keyword capturing, or any links to Facebook and Google. For some reason, Winscribe's website doesn't work with Blacklight. They seem to be aware of the issue, but for some reason don't really care enough to figure out why this is happening. Um, so that's kind of on them. They're not going to be able to pass the Blacklight Test for this. I'm not sure if there's anything nefarious going on. Probably not. Uh, maybe some kind of a restriction with their DNS or something on their website. Not really sure what's going on. But they are the only website that doesn't work with a blacklight test, which is, I'm not sure if it's more annoying or concerning. Um, some of this stuff like keyword capturing or session monitoring scripts and some of those things are a little bit harder to figure out than, you know, if it has Google Analytics, for example. So I think there is value for websites like this, especially if you're a VPN company that want to provide transparency to people who are new users and want to use tools like this to see if your website is privacy friendly. So I do think that Winscribe should fix this. Who knows if they will? They don't really seem to care about it, um, but that's how it is here. In terms of Exodus, we do see that Google uh, Winscribe is using Google Firebase Analytics for their application. Um, this is kind of standard. A lot of VPNs use this, but still it could be better. Other VPNs like TorGuard and Movad and some other ones so far don't use any trackers, which is nice. Winscribe also has a pretty high permission count of around 16 permissions, um, accessing course locations, some of this stuff like this um, for whatever reason. They probably have their permissions and explanations. Um, so it would be cool to see a page explaining some of these permissions. I don't think Winscribe has that, unlike some other services like WeVPN, which do a good job explaining almost every single one of these permissions. So I couldn't really find any information about that. I did find this kind of Reddit thread talking about it, and there was some answers here. Um, but I still think a bigger page would be nice explaining all these permission counts or even just lowering them down a little bit. If you look at Winscribe who has 16 permissions and you look at something like Movad, you can see that it is four permissions, which is really crazy. And you don't need all those things or trackers to operate a good VPN that a lot of people like. So there you go. So Winscribe does have two-factor authentication and they enabled it sometime last year, which is nice. Um, so that's really good. In terms of the company that owns Wimscribe VPN, as far as I know, it hasn't been sold or anything like that. I know they've gotten offers in the past, but they haven't sold out to date. I would like a little bit more transparency on the website here, listing out some of the employees and um, company management. I think Surfshark does this really well, listing out all the employees and different things about that. Not only that, but I think Movad does it really well in which they have like a history buff or like a kind of a roadmap, but in the past of what's gone on with the company, what changes and implementations they've made to make it a better VPN service. I think Winscribe definitely could fill out this page with more information about the company and the owners and stuff like that, as well as something like that, which would be really cool just to keep a track of everything that's been going on with the company and what they've done to fix issues. Now, in terms of complementary privacy services, that is a component of the um, audit. And I do like that Winscribe does provide um, a step above and beyond to give you more privacy overall. They have cool things like Control ID, which is kind of like a paid um, DNS solution that is really customizable and really usable, which is cool. Not only that, but they also have other things like Robert, um, which is cool. It's also kind of like a DNS thing that can control and block ads and it's really customizable. So I really like those features. Really good job here. I also like that Robert's included, but Quick Control ID is a paid thing that is kind of like its own little service. So keep that in mind. 
Now, Windscribe does have a pretty cool application. I like the way it looks. I think it has a new modern interface and it does have pretty cool customizable privacy features, which gets it a pass in this category. It has cool protocols like Stealth, WStun, WireGuard, and stuff like that. Plenty of things to play around with to customize. So overall, really good job here. Now guys, how secure is Windscribe? How private is it in terms of handling your data? Well, I think most for the part it's good, but there have been some serious security issues with Windscribe that you have to kind of take into account, regardless if any information of yours was leaked or anything like that. Number one is probably the most recent issue with Windscribe missing up big time, according to this video I made two weeks ago. It's just kind of now hitting the press and a lot of people are kind of upset about this. I feel like this was a pretty good summary I found on um, Twitter from Dan Gooden, who is a writer at Ars Technica. He writes, Windscribe, a Toronto, Canada-based VPN provider with millions of customers, didn't bother to encrypt a Ukraine-based VPN server that was seized by authorities. Windscribe also stored an open VPN service certificate and its private keys on the server. The mission made it possible for the authorities to implement, impersonate the server in certain situations, such as when they have control of the target's internet connection. This is precisely the scenario that VPNs are supposed to protect against. In a head scratcher, Windscribe said, although we have encrypted servers in high sensitivity regions, the servers in question are running a legacy stack and were not encrypted. As if Ukraine isn't considered a high sensitivity region. To its credit, Windscribe has owned the error and is overhauling its service to make sure omissions like this don't happen again. So that is good. But this is still a pretty serious issue that happened and has kind of impacted Windscribe's reputation lately pretty badly. Another little criticism I have about this little vulnerability thing or server seizure thing that's going on. I do think that Yegor kind of purposely kind of renamed the blog to be something that maybe didn't catch the attention of the news websites. I mean, this is just kind of a theory of mine, a tin hat, whatever you want to say. But the fact that this article is called Open VPN Security Improvements and Changes kind of leads me to believe that they're kind of trying to downplay the issue because it just seems like a routine security update. In fact, if you look on the subreddit for Windscribe or even the Discord server, you know, really some people did find out about it from stuff like app notifications, maybe some emails or reading this blog, you know, the true Windscribe fans knew about this issue. But some of the people who weren't like checking all these things or anything like that, they did kind of miss that issue. And then when it did broke on the press like a day or two ago, they did find out about it and they were like, hey, why weren't we notified? As you can see, there is kind of like a little war going on with this Windscribe's uh, community. Some people are like, hey, this happened several weeks ago. You know, this is old news. Um, and then some people are like on the other side saying, you know, what happened? You know, they're, they're saying that, you know, they don't really know what's going on. And this person saying Windscribe failed us. Um, so there definitely is a little bit of a issue here. I think some people seem to know about it. Some people didn't. Like I said, I do think it could be due to the way the blog was named. It could have been named something like server seized, what we're doing to fix it in the future, something like that made it a little bit more clear. Instead, it just seems like kind of like a routine um, open VPN security update. And then when you scroll down a couple bits, you can see that, you know, there is a smaller header of the actual incident and what is being um, the result of these changes. So I do think that's something they could work on in the future with these kind of announcements uh, regarding these things. It was good that they did announce, you know, this stuff um, not to you know, they re released information about the, um, the server users and stuff like that in a semi-timely manner. So that's good, but I still think they could work on, you know, how they announce this stuff just like in the future. Outside of that, we did have some other issues. Um, there was like an issue with the Chrome extension with Windscribe leaking people's IP addresses, which was pretty bad and not that many people talked about it. Overall, how did Windscribe do in this audit? Well, in some ways it does pretty well. And in other ways, maybe it needs some improvements. I think it does really well in that it offers some core fundamental good things with privacy. It has two-factor authentication and it has that open source analytics. Um, but it does need to make improvements, removing that a little bit of a Google tracker there on Android, maybe fixing some of the compatibility with Blacklight just to provide more transparency to people looking into it. Although, you know, I don't really have any case to believe that it does have a ton of trackers on their website because if you look at it with something like Privacy Badger, nothing shows up. So theoretically, it probably is more privacy friendly than some other ones that don't pass the blast like test, which is good. They don't also collect any logs. They have decent privacy features on the application, and they also have really good complementary privacy services with Control ID and stuff like Robert. However, that said, the team does still need to step things up a bit with um, their security and stuff like that in terms of privacy. They're clearly working on fixing some of those things, which is good. And one of my favorite things is that they don't have any company acquisitions either, which is really solid. Anyways, guys, thanks for checking out this OneScribe privacy audit. If you like to see VPNs that did pass the audit, check the links in the description down below. And I'll see you in the next audit very soon.